Last week we made this mold, and this week we're going to cast it. And in order to do that, we're going to use roto casting. So that means we're going to have to connect this mold to this machine. In order to do that, we have to make a cradle. And I've drawn one out here, and I cut it out. Don't need you anymore. I traced it onto a piece of wood. I actually made two of them, taped them together, cut them out, and drilled these two holes at the same time all at once. That way I know these holes are perfectly aligned. Remember those sticks we used to make the party lines? Here they are doing double duty. Let's finish assembling this thing. Beautiful. Now we have ourselves a cradle to put the cradle onto the machine. The first thing we got to do is put the machine on the bench and simplest way to do that I find is just with a couple of clamps. That's why I don't have a base for this machine or a stand. I just want to be able to put it away, store it, not have it in the way. Don't use them that often, my rotators. But when I do, they come in handy. So I just clamped it to the base. It is going nowhere. It is strong. The machine, as you can see, is all full of holes, especially on the inner ring, which is what everything mounts to. So it's very easy. The whole thing is held on by four bolts. That's all it takes. Here's a tip. What I like to do is to have the holes really oversize. If all the holes are really tight to the hardware, it makes assembling stuff a lot harder, frankly. I gotta tell you, this is not precision machinery building. The good news is it doesn't have to be. Tighten up the little bolts, and really I'm not going much more than finger tight. Doesn't have to be. That thing is on there. Let's see if it spins. Woohoo! It spins like a champion. Look at that thing. This is why I love my rotation machines. <laughs> ah! Okay, question is, does this fit into the cradle? That's what I want to know. And the answer is, it drops in just like that. Nice. All right, yeah, that, that dropped in perfect. Just perfect. Now, question, how are you gonna keep it in place? I'm just gonna use big old rubber bands. These are not your average, everyday garden variety rubber bands. These are silicone rubber bands. It, they're strong as hell. They never rot like those cheap office store rubber bands get old and brittle and rot and nasty and horrible. These never will, they're silicone. And they are pretty much forever. And they are, boy, more than strong enough, more than up to the task of holding this thing on. The hooks, by the way, if you wonder where I got them, I made them. And uh, they're custom built for this rig. So let's get this one into place. Hook it in like that. Very nice. Make sure I'm wrapped around the other side. And just come over and hook it on the other side, just like that. Boy, it couldn't be simpler, couldn't be easier. Now, if I did everything right, and I hope I did, the mass of the, of the mold is centered over the machine, and it should just spin, spin, spin. What we need to do now is a pour hole. We need to make a bung hole in this. I did not make that up, bung holes are the holes in wine caskets and whiskey barrels. It's an ancient old word. So we're gonna make our own bung. In order to do that, well, let's go over to the drill press. And what I have done is, I use this plug cutter, cut out a plug, very simple, did that off camera, tested it, fits like a champ. <laughs> Easy peasy, let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. That is a nice fit. And we're just going to wax these parts. That's all it's going to take. And that is going to give us our bung for our bung hole. The machine is all set up. I changed the orientation of the mold in the machine. It was facing this way, 90 degrees. And I didn't like that because that meant that the opening here was going to face the bearings on this side. And that's bad in case there's leaks, and there will be leaks. You can almost always count on leaks in a rotational mold. This is a square frame, and all the holes are symmetrical, so it fit any way I wanted to orient it. 
And then I just covered the bottom rail in painter's tape. And the beauty to that is, is then if it does leak, you can see that down here it could fall and it could leak. It's covered in tape and you can just peel the tape off and you keep your rotator clean. Same with the table. I've got the table covered in paper. You can see that I've got C-clamps mounted on the machine and that is to balance it. And it balances, as you can see, really nice. Look at that thing stay in place. This axis, it does not balance as well. It's amazing how little it has to be off balance to fall one way or the other. If I was gonna cast 100 of these, you better believe I would go through and balance both axes because it just makes it much less work, much less effort to operate the machine. This, however, has one advantage when it's slightly off balance like this, and that is that as you spin it, it tends to power itself. Now you have to be careful to pay attention to what side is usually up and what side is usually down. But as you can see, I'm spinning this mold with one finger and it's heavy, it's not light, and it's very, very easy to turn. I always get the question every time I do a rotation video, why don't you put motors on it? And the answer is motors aren't as smart as I am. I'm not that smart, but I'm smarter than a motor. And uh, you would have to program the motors to give you the proper pattern of rotation to optimize the shape of this mold. So every single mold you make, and I'm a custom shop, everyone is different. I don't do long production runs very often. Mostly what I do is one-offs like this. Like in this mold, we're only gonna make a couple of castings. It's a prototype. It's going off to a factory in China to make the real production run of the final products. So this setup, gives me the maximum flexibility, the maximum ability to cast any shape, and I don't have to sit there and reprogram motors every time because you really want random rotation, but it's a good idea to have a clear idea of what your shape is inside because that way you have, you're thinking about where the resin is flowing and what's filling. Maybe you want it to have more resin down on the bottom end to be a little heavier on the bottom and a little lighter so it's not top heavy. You can do anything you want by being careful and understanding what your mold cavity is, how it's laying in space, and how the resin is flowing around inside of it. So this top is very simple. As you can see, it's just held on with two rubber bands with very simple wooden cleats. That's all it takes. We're going to begin making this casting by pre-painting the mold. I think that if I rotate this mold with all of this detail in here, it's just not going to make a perfect casting. I think we're going to have bubbles. Dump, 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 to make this go fast. We want this to go quick. Take a brush and just brush the surface. Brush the resin into all of the cracks, completely coating the resin as much as possible. And all I wanna do is make sure that this thing has been pre-coated. I think we're ready to go. That looks well coated. The brush can go into the acetone to save it. Let's close this mold up like this. We want to get this mold to close up neat and sweet like that. Just like that. We want to put the case around it and to hold it tight. Let's put some rubber bands around it. The next step is to get this, this piece <laughs> this piece mounted in this machine. We put the first shot in by hand and the subsequent shots we're gonna put in with the rotation machine. So we're gonna get her going. Quick, quick, quick. Let's do this thing. Dump it in. Okay, here's the first test of our lid. See how quick the lid goes on. Should go on nicely. Down it goes, and down it goes, and we are ready to spin. Let's spin this thing. Looks like it's holding on just fine. The idea is just keeping it moving. Keep it moving, keep it moving. We keep an eye on the witness cup, and that tells us when we're gelling. We're still running, we're still flowing, quite fluid. I'll make sure that it gets a lot of resin down here at the bottom. I think it's favoring the top. I'm kind of watching what's going on. It's handy to have two different color rubber bands. And the reason for that is you get to see kind of more what's happening. You know, you get a sense for it. You go, am I always seeing the rubber bands on the upside mostly, or are they on the downside mostly? And if they're on the upside mostly, you gotta hold it. So they're on the downside. You wanna just go random, but you also wanna 
keep an eye on how things are rotating. I always get a lot of comments from rotation videos, and some guys tell me that I spin the rotator way too fast, and other guys tell me I spin the rotator way too slow. <laughs> so nobody knows, and I gotta tell you the truth, it all seems to work pretty much. Uh, it's really more about getting random rotation. See where we're at, see where we're at. Yeah, we pretty much gelled, we pretty much gelled. So we are good. Make sure there's no sag. We're good. On to the next batch. This mold is ready to come off the frame. What do you guys think? <laughs> you want to make some book? You want to take bets? What do we got? We got to, do we have a good casting? Do we not have a good casting? Who knows? We won't know until we know. And down it comes. Oh yeah. This kit did its job. Let's put it down, out of the way. Excitement time, <laughs> my favorite time of the whole week. We're gonna open this boy up and see what we got. See how lucky we got. Never know, never know. This is the first shot out of this mold. Should just pop open. And my immediate concern was the parting line. I don't like cases like these particularly. I'd rather see the mold. And you can see why. There's a little bit of misalignment here in the pole. It's pretty good through most of it. Gotta say, that is a very mild parting line. But up here, it's a little bit misaligned at the top up here. I don't love that. If I didn't have a hard case around it and I was just using rubber bands, I could massage that and I could probably get that to go away. All this means is a little bit of extra work on the casting. Let's see. I don't need a 100% win. I just don't want to spend the rest of the day fixing bubbles. Oh no. Remember, this is a prototype. This is going off to a factory and they're gonna use this as their master to make ceramic molds out of. For making mugs, 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 mugs. Come on, let go, let go. Come on. Oh yeah, here it comes. Let's take a look. Man, oh man, that is clean. Let's look on the sides where I was a little concerned because I didn't paint. That is clean. Lettering is perfectly clean. Okay, a little bit of flash. See the party line flash? This is what I mean. This was the area that I couldn't massage. Right in here, we picked up some flash but it is just buried down in there. I buried the parting line way down into that groove. That was deliberate. So all this flash will come right off. Super nice. This came out great. So what do we learn? We learned about the pre-painting technique. That works out really well. And uh, it's got a nice wall thickness to it. I'd love to cut it open and, and examine the wall thickness, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to make another one right now. Hey, if you like this video, hit that like button because it really does help the channel. We've had just amazing, amazing growth in the channel in the last couple of weeks. Thank you to all my new subscribers and all of the comments and all of the interaction and all the nonsense that goes down below. I love it all. And I really appreciate you guys being here. I will see you next week. Hello, boys. What do you think? <laughs> Loving it. All right, cool. Done.